Tahiti. To some, it is an island. Actually, a string of islands known as French Polynesia. Location, midway between California and Australia. Origin, volcanic. Population, about 130,000. To others, Tahiti is not just geography. Tahiti is a work of art, a unique collection of colors and textures and rhythms that begins. To some, Tahiti is a woman, strikingly beautiful, seductively graceful. Some see Tahiti as a home, a business, a culture. But I agree with the man who said Tahiti is a disease, and the only known cure is Tahiti. God Maui fished these islands from the sea. The fertility god Ro'o gave the shade of the palm and the fruits of the land. The fish were a gift from Tangaroa, god of the sea. And Tawahiri, the wind god, guided emigrants safely to these shores centuries before Christ. It was a virtual paradise. Mild climate, abundant food, at altars like these, called mares, they ceaselessly gave thanks to their gods with prayers and offerings and sacrifice, animal and sometimes human. But this effortless existence led to serious overpopulation. Over the centuries, some were killed in wars, others were forced to emigrate, while many were murdered in childhood. According to some historical sources, over two-thirds of all children were killed by their parents at birth. Thus, the population was held in check and there was enough food to give the survivors an easy, prosperous life. The coconut and breadfruit were easily accessible, and the ancient fish traps can still be seen as submerged stone monuments to a vanished culture. For on June 18, 1768, the British frigate Dolphin sighted Tahiti, and the ancient Polynesian culture was doomed. Europeans discovered Tahiti in the 18th century. After the explorers came the missionaries and merchants. Chinese workers settled on the islands, and the people of Polynesia adopted the mixed cultures and mingled blood of the newer immigrants. They are a people of unique style and appearance, and they have captivated visitors for centuries. Visitors like the French artist Paul Gauguin, who immortalized the islands and its people in oils. has himself been immortalized here on Tahiti. But none have had more influence than the Popa'a. Literal Polynesian translation, stranger with burnt shoulder blades, the well-baked tourist. It is the airplane that brings the Popa'a, many on a seven and a half hour jet flight from LA. And it is the airplane, smaller prop planes, that conveniently connect many of the 130 islands. And it is on such planes that we now set out on our first day whirlwind tour of French Polynesia. As promised, we'll do it the smart way, Tahitian style. For the next four days, we'll be busy travelers. Today, we're here to relax. These are short island hopping flights, but even in the few airborne minutes, no tourist can help but marvel at the impressive view. Volcanic eruptions and coral formations have combined to create some of the world's most spectacular scenery and exotic islands. Morea, Rengaroa, Manihi, Rayatea, Wahine, Bora Bora. Dazzling lagoons and beautiful beaches, the same coastlines that attracted the first settlers still beckon tourists. Warm, gentle waters are pounding surfs, enough to satisfy the energetic swimmer seeking refreshing exercise. For the natives, the traditional outrigger canoe is still a common form of aquatic transportation. Though the impatient tourist may want some less time-consuming form of offshore transportation, But pity the poor tourist who must stay on the surface. 
For some of Tahiti's most spectacular scenery lies beneath the waters of her lagoons. And as an avid diver, I had plenty of opportunity to actively explore the beautiful reefs and striking fish. Parrotfish and damsels, Moorish idols and lionfish, even sharks. Yes, I did say sharks, but really, there, there's no cause for panic, believe me. You see, in this case, the sharks are kept in a pen on the island of Manihi, and the residents leave no doubt as to who's boss of these waters. On shore, the islands of Tahiti are best seen by hopping aboard the most common form of mass transit. It's called Le Truck. It is an efficient people mover and gives a good view of islands in change, gradually urbanizing while clinging to vestiges of an ancient culture. <laughs> Oh, yeah. The ancient art of fire walking is now virtually extinct. On occasion, it is still practiced by the residents of Opaiti, a village on the island of Raiatea. The stones are still heated for five hours by burning logs. The ancient incantations are still recited by the old Tahua, the sorcerer. The fire walkers still make the perilous journey across the scalding stones. But now the purpose is more commercial than religious. In this case, a performance for the guests of the Bali High Hotel. But yes, the residents of Tahiti still love food and celebration. And on special occasions, they still hold tamara, a Polynesian luau. As they have since the earliest European explorers arrived, the Tahitians have been willing to share their culture, even though it means that their lifestyle gradually changes with the sharing. Culture is as attractive as the people. It is simple and beguiling. The alphabet consists of 17 letters. And during this, our very first day, I have already learned some essential vocabulary. Ah, Yorana, Yorana. That means hello. Nana. And that means goodbye. It also means we'll be right back with our PM Magazine departments as we continue our week in Tahiti. Stay with us.